Let's have a look at another example of a change of variables. In this case, we're going to have to come up with the change of variables on our own. So we want to evaluate this integral over the region R, where R is the region in the first octant or first quadrant, sorry, bounded by the ellipse. So we've got an ellipse. And when y equals 0, I see that x has got to be a third. So x is a third, it's passing through that point. And when x equals 0, y has got to be a half to satisfy it. So it'll be somewhere up here at a half. And so our ellipse looks something like this. So that's what we're interested in integrating over that region. So that's 9x squared plus 4y squared equals 1. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to find some change of coordinates. x equal to y equal 2. And some uv coordinates and then the corresponding region over here which is more easy to deal with. So what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to be guided by the fact that if this wasn't an ellipse but it was a circle, I'd use polar coordinates. And then I'd integrate over a rectangle in polar coordinates. R would go from 0 to whatever the radius of the circle was. Uh, theta would go from 0 to pi by 2. But this isn't a circle. This is an ellipse. But I can still take those ideas and use them. So what it is, is I will say x is going to be one-third v cos u and y is one-half v sine u. So you might say, well, how did I come up with that? Well, here I'm thinking of the following. If I get rid of the one-third and the one-half, I really just have polar coordinates, but uh, I'm using v in place of r and u in place of theta. So I've thrown the one-third in there in front of the x so that it doesn't x doesn't go any further than a third. And I put the one-half in front of the y so that y doesn't go any higher than a half. And that will trace out the ellipse. This actually is uh, going to give me, when v is equal to 1 in both of these cases, it's going to give me the ellipse. And when v is smaller than 1, it gives me points inside the ellipse. So what v ranges over is from 0 to 1, and what u ranges over is from 0 to pi by 2. And so that's the region that's going to give rise to that quarter of an ellipse. Okay, so there's our change of variables. Now what we need to work out with, or work with, is the Jacobian. That's dx, y, du, v, or in other words, x sub u, x sub v, y sub u, y sub v. x sub u, that would be negative one-third v sine u. x sub v is one-third uh, cos u y sub u is one half v cos u and y sub v is one half sine u. The determinant of that is negative one sixth v sine squared u minus one sixth v cos squared u. And since sine squared plus cos squared is one, this becomes a negative one sixth v. And then when I use it in the integral, I'm going to have to take the absolute value of it. So that'll strip off the negative sign. All right, now we're ready to write down the integral. The integral over the region R of sine 9x squared plus 4y squared dA becomes the integral where u goes from 0 to pi by 2 v goes from 0 to 1. 
9x squared plus 4y squared. I know it's very tempting to write 1 in there, but it's not 1. Um, 1 is only the value when we're on that outer boundary of the ellipse. We're supposed to be integrating over all points inside the ellipse. So this isn't 1, but what we could do is we just throw these values in. 1 third v cos u. So that's not, uh, maybe I should keep the sign there. So I'll keep the sign there. And then we've got 9 times a third squared, so that would cancel with the 9, so I can get rid of that. Then I get a v squared cos squared u plus a 4 times y squared, so 4 times a quarter, which would cancel off, v squared sine squared u. Ah, but sine squared plus cos squared is 1, so this all just boils down to a v. So there we go, it's a sine v squared. And then we get 1 6 v from the absolute value of the Jacobian, and then v is integrated with respect to first, so that's a dv du. And so this becomes then 1 6 the integral, if I look at the integral with respect to u, I see there's no u present, so that's 1 6 there's an extra pi by 2 that comes out of that outer integral, and we're just left with the inter inner integral, 0 to 1, of v sine of v squared dv. And now we can use a substitution on that inner integral. So this is a pi by 12. That inner integral, that's negative 1 half cosine of v squared is the antiderivative, and that goes from 0 to 1, and so this becomes then uh, pi by 12. Plugging 1 in gives us negative a half cosine of 1, and then minus, minus a half cosine of 0, so that's plus a half, so that's pi by 24 1 minus cosine of 1. And so there's our final result. All right, and that's it for this example. In the last video, we will do an example where we do a triple integral, and the change of coordinates in that case will be to spherical coordinates, so we'll see how the Jacobian can produce that rho squared sine phi that comes up in our volume element. We'll see you in the next video.